Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I want to talk about the upcoming iPhone 13 and why I'm actually excited about it. And this is the first time I've been excited about an iPhone in a very, very long time. The reason being because it's supposed to have the 120 hertz refresh rate, at least the Pro models. I, I don't know if it's going to apply to all iPhone 13 models. It would make sense more so on the Pro end because they're more expensive, it's a more pro feature, I guess, and a lot of people really are not crazy about it because it burns up the battery. It's just, I think that's why they haven't included it as of yet. And there was even rumor that it was gonna be on the 12 Pro series phones this last year, and they kinda of can't exit at the last moment. But the iPhone 12, as much of a nice phone as it is, I really wanted it to be in there. And if you don't know what 120 hertz refresh rate is, I'm going to explain that to you in detail in this video so you have an understanding of what it is and why I think that it's cool. But before we get into all this, I do wanna say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, thank you for being here. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. Now let's talk about why I'm excited about the upcoming iPhone 13. So this guy right here, the iPhone 12, just has the regular standard 60 hertz refresh rate. And you're probably thinking, okay, what's the big deal? I've been using an iPhone for all these years. I've never had 120 hertz refresh rate on anything. Why should I care now? Well, refresh rate, it, what it is, is it's how many times the screen refreshes in one second. So if you're looking at just the regular screen on the phone, it refreshes 60 times in one second. And you're probably sitting here thinking, wow, that's a lot. That's a whole lot, so shouldn't that be good? I mean, 60 times in one second is a ton of times to be refreshing the image. Well, yes, that's very good, but the more times you refresh it, I mean, up to a limit, you're, the human eye can only tell so much at a certain point. But at 120 hertz, it refreshes 120 times in one second. So you're gonna get tons more smoothness in what you're seeing on the screen. And that impacts motion blur, it's good for watching videos, it's good for when you're scrolling like your Instagram feed. You wouldn't think it, it may not seem like something that's out of this world exciting, but it's something that I, having been using on my phones for the last few years in the Android world, am really excited. So what that does is whenever you see stuff on the screen, like whenever you move your hand across the screen like this, you know, it's kind of blurry, it's, it's not like super smooth, when you do 120 hertz versus 60, it looks like this, as opposed to this. It's much more, much more clear, and when you do like high intensity stuff, when you watch movies, when you watch action stuff, when you play games, it clears things up because it's refreshing faster. So what happens is you have frames per second, which is how many frames are being drawn in one second, the more the better. So when you look at like the old picture books from a long time ago when you were a kid and you spin little pages, well, every time one of those pages spins, it gets smoother and smoother and smoother. Well, you can only do that so much until the screen can't keep up with the amount of times that you're drawing images. So then it has to refresh the screen faster to give you that smooth appearance. And just for an illustration on my phone here, like on the Samsung Galaxy, Z Fold 3, it has 120 hertz refresh rate. So when you go in and you look at it, and I'll show you the example here. So what they call it on the Samsung is motion smoothness. And they have an illustration over here showing you standard, which is the 60 hertz, and then they show you the adaptive, which is 120 hertz. Now, what this does is it shows you kind of what the, what the difference is with the appearance. It's much smoother. You can really tell a difference when you're scrolling through Instagram, you're scrolling through Twitter, because normally when you scroll, especially at any speed, it starts getting blurry and it, you can't really read a lot of what's going on. So this makes it where you can see things, it's more smooth, it has a nicer feel when you're dragging the feed up and down on your phone. It's just a nicety, it's not a necessity. And that's why a lot of people are like, why do I need this, why do I care, it's not that big of a deal. Some people may not even be able to tell the difference. And that's the same thing with when we went from 1080p to 4K, a lot of people are like, I don't see the difference, I don't see the difference. Sure, a lot of this stuff is subjective, but objectively, it is better And as far as what you're getting to see on the screen. I mean, some people may not even like it. It's funny because when you talk about, like with TVs, they've even tried to do this whole 240 hertz or 240, you know, it, it's smooth motion 240, smooth motion 360, all these crazy things. Those are all algorithmic based motion things that they do on their screen and they make it look weird. It looks like it has like a soap opera effect. 
largely. I think most people agree that 120 hertz looks pretty good. I've really enjoyed using it on my phone because it looks really, really nice and smooth as opposed to whenever you're using it on a regular phone. It's just a nice thing. But the problem is, the caveat is that it does burn up more battery. If your screen is gonna refresh 120 times in one second, as opposed to 60, it's working twice as hard to show you the same image on the screen. So it's really not good for the battery. As far, I mean, not bad as in harmful, bad as in it eats up more battery life. So when they first put it in, they limited it to like 1080p on the, on the Samsung phones. And now you can get it on Quad HD Plus. They have this new technology, it's called an LTPO screen. And ironically enough, Apple is buying the screens from Samsung that it's putting into their phones. These LTPO displays allow you to turn the refresh rate down to basically one refresh per second, basically like looking at a still image. If you're looking at this, you can see there's not a whole lot of movement going on. So what it will do is it lowers the, the refresh rate so that way it's, it doesn't need to refresh this 120 times a second. But whenever you turn on apps, when you go into certain things, when you start moving things around again, it ramps and it speeds back up so that way you can that way you can appreciate it and you can enjoy it. So I think Apple was waiting for that technology to put it into their phones because Apple just now, since the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 12, really got into a position where they're like, okay, they have respectable battery. If you use an iPhone 10 or like an iPhone 10s Max, you probably noted that the battery life was pretty terrible. So I'm glad that they fixed that. iPhone 11 was amazing battery life, especially in the Pro Max. They tapered it back a little bit to fit in the new form factor on the iPhone 12, whenever it comes to this guy, because they wanted to make it more boxy and square it off and flat edges. So they had to make the battery a little bit smaller, but still it has respectable battery life. Going into the iPhone 13, I don't know how much juice they put in the tank, but definitely it's gonna be using an LTPO screen, I can almost guarantee, and it's gonna be an adaptive 120 hertz. I don't expect it to be running 120 hertz full time, very much like Samsung already does with their panels, but it's a ton of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. It gives it a much more premium feel, and like I said, that, that's one of the reasons I think you might see it in the Pro and not in the regular 13. If you see it in both, that's great. That, that means everybody gets a win. I'm sure they'll allow you to turn it off. Well, it's Apple. They probably won't allow you to turn it off. But anyway, that, that's why I'm excited because I, I've been waiting for this feature for years. And I'm glad that Apple, for lack of better words, is inventing it because that's what Apple does. New features come out. Usually it takes about three years before they end up in an iPhone after Samsung and the rest of the Android world has time to you know, vet it out and, and fine tune it. Once it's ready, Apple gives it its own name. They actually had it in the iPad since the 2018 model, I believe, and that's what they call the ProMotion display. It looks nice. I've got it on my iPad Pro 2021 model. It's cool, but I've been waiting on it for the phone and that's why I'm excited now. So that's all I've got in this video. Hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully I explained the whole 120 hertz thing to you well enough that you can understand it and you can appreciate it. Sorry, I almost dropped my fold. <laughs> That'd have been bad. So hopefully I've been able to explain that so you can be like, okay, this is cool. I see why that's a neat feature. Maybe it's still not for me, but it's definitely worth something to take a look at once it gets to the store, once they show up, if you just want to go check it out and see how Apple did it with their phones. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.